Sutra. The form body is not the Buddha. The same is also true of sound. Yet it is not apart from sounds or forms or sounds that one sees the Buddha's power of spiritual penetrations. One with little wisdom is unable to know all Buddha's true and actual states. When one has cultivated pure karma for a long time, then one is able to understand this. Commentary: The form body refers to the Buddha's thirty-two fine marks and eighty minor characteristics. But the form body is not the true Buddha. The true Buddha isn't simply a form body. This is to say, everything with form is forms. Everything with form is empty and forms. If one can see all marks as no marks, then one sees the first come one. If you can see marks and yet be apart from marks, then you will not have attachments. Why does the Buddha manifest the thirty-two fine marks and eighty minor characteristics? It is just because living beings are all attached to marks. If the Buddha were without marks, then living beings wouldn't recognize him. If there are marks, then living beings will know it's the Buddha. Apart from marks, they wouldn't know that empty space and the Dharma realm are all the Buddha's body. So he says, if one wishes to know the state of the Buddhas. First, one to make one's mind pure, like an empty space. If empty space there aren't any obstructions, there's not even a single thing. If people can cultivate to the point where there are no obstacles, then they can come to understand the Buddha's body. The Buddha's body doesn't come or go. The Buddha's body is neither produced nor destroyed. The Buddha's body is neither defined nor pure. The Buddha's body doesn't increase or decrease. The same is also true of sound. The form body isn't the Buddha, so is the Buddha's sound the Buddha. No, it is not the Buddha either. If you are attached to sound, you are making another mistake. Yet it is not apart from forms or sounds. It is not apart from the form body. Or the substance of sound that one sees the Buddha's power of spiritual penetrations. The Buddha uses the substances of forms and sounds skillfully combined with his wonderful spiritual penetrations to bring about inexhaustible changes and transformations. But you don't want to get attached to any of these. One with little wisdom is unable to know. If you are a person who doesn't have wisdom. The kind of great wisdom which can thoroughly fathom the source of dharma, you won't be able to know the states of the Buddhas. You won't be able to understand all Buddhas' true and actual states. When one has cultivated pure karma for a long time, then one is able to understand this. If you wish for a true mind, then cultivate pure way karma for a long time. This means riding the mind of defilements. When cultivating, you don't want to treat yourself. You should ask yourself whether or not you have thoughts of desire, false thoughts of food, drink, clothes, money, and/or fame are all thoughts of desire. Perhaps you have a desire for fame, then you are defiled by the desire for fame. Or perhaps you have desire for benefit. Seeking benefit is also defiling. Maybe you have desire for forms, so you end up being defined by forms. Or if you have desire for sleep, then you become defined by sleep. You don't want to cheat yourself. Instead, you should return the light and the illumined within. Ask yourself: Have I really cut off desire? If you haven't cut off desire, then at all times you should very carefully not give rise to it. You should follow your desire. Don't be led away by desire thoughts. To indulge in desire is to be impure. Therefore, if you're off by a hair in the beginning, you'll be off a thousand miles in the end. This is the place where you should apply apply your skill. Day after day, ask yourself: Are my desire thoughts increasing or decreasing? Are my desire thoughts diminishing? Am I clear in mind with few desires? Have I cut off desire and done away with love? If you haven't, then you should quickly cultivate pure karma. 
You don't want to cultivate defiling dramas. You should only cultivate pure karma. This isn't a matter of one day and one night. In life after life without end, you want to cultivate pure karma. If you cultivate pure karma, then you can obtain true wisdom. If you can obtain wisdom, it can take you to the other shore. If you don't cultivate pure karma, then you become very stupid. Every day you're seeking for wealth gets you in a frenzy. Every day you look at forms until it drives you crazy. Every day you strive for fame and end up going mad. Even if you don't have enough to eat. You absolutely go insane. If you don't get just the right amount of sleep, it drives you up the wall. This isn't having pure karma. All of you, good and wise advisors, these are places where you should apply your skill. If you don't apply for these places, then then even if you were to cultivate for eighty thousand great compass. You wouldn't be able to accomplish pure karma. If you are unable to accomplish pure karma, then you won't be able to understand the Buddha state. If one cultivates pure karma, then one is able to understand this. You will be able to understand the principle expressed in the previous verse. The form body is not the Buddha. The same is also true of sound. Yet it is not apart from forms or sounds. That one sees the Buddha's power of spiritual penetrations. Sutra: The ones of proper enlightenment have no place they come to, nor is there any where to they go. Their pure and wonderful form bodies manifest because of spiritual penetrations. Within measureless world systems, the first common bodies manifest. While extensively speaking, the subtle, wonderful dharma, their minds are without any attachment. Commentary: The ones of proper enlightenment is the name of four Buddhas, also referred to previously as first commons Tathagatas. Proper enlightenment refers to unsurpassed, proper and equal right enlightenment. What is meant by proper enlightenment? There is no place in which there is not enlightenment. So proper enlightenment is also called great enlightenment, and is also called wonderful enlightenment. These are all other names given to Buddhas. They have no place they come to. This is to say, the Buddhas have no place from which they come. Do they have any place which they go to? Then, if there isn't any place from which they come, how could they go anywhere? So the next line says, "Nor is there any where they go. There is no coming and no going. They exhaust empty space and pervade the Dharma realm." They completely fill up all Buddha sutras, and so all Buddha sutras are places in which the Buddha's Dharma body is found. It is not present and yet not absent in any place. The places where it is are also the places where it is not. There are pure and wonderful form bodies manifest because of spiritual penetrations. The Buddha's form bodies are pure, meaning that their body, mouth, and mind karmas are all pure. Their bodies don't have any of the three evil: killing, stealing, or sexual misconduct. What's more, there isn't even the thought of killing, stealing, or sexual misconduct. If there were thoughts of killing, stealing, or sexual misconduct, then there wouldn't be any purity. Pure also means that the three evils of the mind. Greed, hatred, and stupidity are gone. The body, which is without killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct, and the mind, which is without thoughts of greed, hatred, and stupidity, are purified in one single thought. The mouth has four evils. It has more evils than either the mind or the body. The mouth is able to engage in irresponsible speech, false speech. Abusive speech and divisive speech. When there is no divisive speech, abusive speech, irresponsible speech, or false speech, the mouth karma is pure. When the three karmas are purified, the wonderful form body is obtained. 
the body then manifests the 32 file marks and the 80 minor characteristics. How do these manifest? The Buddha's pure and wonderful form bodies manifest because of spiritual penetrations. Their pure and splendid form bodies appear because of the Buddha's spiritual powers. Within measureless world systems, the first common bodies manifest. The world systems being referred to here include not only our Saha world, but the worlds of the ten directions, like fine modes of dust throughout the ten directions. Is the ineffable, the ineffable, and inif infinite numbers of worlds. The Buddhas go to all these worlds and manifest the Dharma body of Buddha. Originally, there isn't anything, but now they make appear this body. While extensively speaking the subtle, wonderful Dharma, their minds are without any attachments. Extensively speaking means explaining in such great detail that nothing surpasses what they have to say. Is higher than anything else. It's so deep and profound that there isn't anything more witty. Nothing else is higher than it, nor is there anything more profound. So this is said to be inconceivably subtle, wonderful drama, because the Buddha speak this subtle, wonderful, inconceivable drama. Their minds are without an attachment. Their minds are not attached to dramas nor are they attached to self. All attachments are non-existent. Sutra, with wisdom which is boundless, they thoroughly understand all dramas. Universally entering into dharma realms, they manifest the power of self-mastery. Living beings as well as all dramas are thoroughly understood without obstruction. They universally manifest a multitude of forms and images and pervade all sutras. If one wishes to seek all wisdom and quickly accomplish unsurpassed enlightenment, one should use the pure and wondrous mind to cultivate the practices for Bodhi. Commentary With wisdom which is boundless, they thoroughly understand all dharmas. This is praising the Buddha's wisdom. Is saying there aren't any boundaries to the Buddha's wisdom because their wisdom doesn't have any boundaries. They thoroughly understand the real mark of all dharmas. Universally entering into dharma realms, they manifest the power of self mastery. The Buddha's dharma body universally pervades the dharma realm, it reaches to the ends of empty space and pervades the dharma realm. They manifest this power of great self mastery. Of spiritual penetrations to teach and transform living beings. Living beings as well as all dharmas are thoroughly understood without obstruction. The Buddhas understand all living beings' minds and all dharmas totally without obstruction. There are no obstacles to their understanding and so they penetrate through without obstruction. They universally manifest a multitude of forms and images the Buddhas everywhere pervade and make appear a variety of forms and images. They pervade all sutras. They pervade all Buddha lands. If one wishes to seek all wisdom, they are surpassed highest wisdom and quickly accomplish unsurpassed enlightenment. One should use the pure and wondrous mind. Then very quickly one can accomplish unsurpassed, proper and equal right enlightenment. The Buddha food. You should use the pure and wondrous mind, a mind that is without defilements, that is not upside down, and that is without ignorance, is a pure and wonderful job, wonderful mind. A mind with ignorance is not a pure and wonderful mind, and so you should use a pure and wonderful mind to cultivate the practices for body. Use this pure and wonderful mind. To cultivate practices for Bodhi and practice to attain the fruit of enlightenment to the way. Cultivate these practices and separate from all defiling attachments. Sutra If there is one who sees the first commons, powers of awesome spirit such as these, one should make offerings to the most supreme honored ones and not have any doubts. Commentary If 
There is one who sees the thirst come one's powers of awesome spirit, such as these. One should make offerings to the most supreme honored ones. Suppose there are living beings who can see the Tathagata's power of awesome spirit, such as these. As previously mentioned, one should, with the utmost respect, use verses to praise the Buddha's great awesome spiritual powers, and one should not have any doubts. You should vastly cultivate the giving of offerings to the most supreme honored ones and not produce a mind written with doubt. This verse is exhorting all living beings to rely on the Dharma to cultivate and not give rise to doubts. Then the Buddha's superior, awesome spirit, will certainly protect and aid them. Sutra At that time, solid banner Bodhisattva Bodhisattva receiving the Buddha's awesome spiritual power, universally contemplated the ten directions and spoke these verses. The Tathagatas are superior beyond compare, inexpressible, deep, and profound. They transcend the path of words and language and are pure like empty space. You should contemplate these lions among men with their powers of comfortable spiritual penetrations, who are already apart from discriminations, yet able to cause those who discriminate to see them. The guiding masters proclaim the most profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma, and according to the causes and conditions, they manifest incomparable bodies. Commentary At that time, that very instant, Solid Banner Bodhisattva receiving the Buddha's awesome spiritual power. He received Shakyamuni Buddha's great awesome spiritual power. Universally contemplated the ten directions. He everywhere contemplated the causes and conditions of all living beings throughout the ten directions and then spoke these verses. He used the following verses to praise the Buddha. The Tathagatas are superior beyond compare. The Tathagatas, the Buddhas, are the most supreme beings. Nothing else can compare to the Buddhas. It is said, above and below heaven, nothing can compare to the Buddha. In all the worlds throughout the ten directions, he is incomparable. I have exhaustively observed everything in the world, and none of it comes up to the Buddha. The Bodhisattva says that the Buddhas are inexpressible, deep, and profound. The Buddha's subtle, wonderful state is most profound. Is most profound. Its measureless, inexpressibly inexpressible. They transcend the path of words and language. They leap over the path of words and languages. Words and language aren't able to praise the Buddhas enough, and they are pure like empty space. The Buddha's state is pure like empty space. You should contemplate these lions among men. All of you living beings take a look at the lions among men, another name for Buddhas. With their powers of comfortable spiritual penetrations, they have great comfortable power of spiritual penetrations. They are ones who are already apart from discriminations. They have already separated from all discriminations of marks and appearances. Their minds, therefore, don't discriminate. Yet they are able to cause those who discriminate to these them to see them. Yet they can enable all those living beings who still discriminate to constantly see Buddhas. The Buddhas are apart from discrimination, but living beings are able to see the Buddhas simply because they allow these beings caught up in discrimination to see them. The guiding masters proclaim the most profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma. The guiding master is just the Buddha, and according to the causes and conditions, they manifest incomparable bodies. Now, because Shakyamuni Buddha wishes to open up the causes and conditions for procla proclaiming this subtle, wonderful drama, he manifests this body which, above and below heaven, is without comparison. In the worlds of the ten directions, nothing compares with it. And so he says, I have exhaustively observed everything in the world, and none of it comes up to the Buddha. Sutra, this is great wisdom, the place of all 
Buddha's practices. If one wishes to understand, then one should constantly draw near the Buddhas. With mind karma constantly pure, one makes offerings to all Tathagatas. One's mind is never weary, and one is able to enter the Buddha's way. Commentary: This is great wisdom. This is just speaking of the Avatamsaka Sutra. The Avatamsaka Sutra is indeed the great wisdom of all Buddhas. Great wisdom is also the place of all Buddha's practices. Therefore, if you want to have great wisdom, you should recite the Avatamsaka Sutra and use the principles of the Avatamsaka Sutra in your cultivation. These are exactly the Dharma doors that all Buddhas cultivate. If one wishes to understand, then one should constantly draw near the Buddhas. If you truly wish to understand the principles of the Avatamsaka Sutra, you should constantly draw near to all Buddhas and not be apart from the Buddha Dharma. You should forever practice and investigate the Buddha Dharma within this Sutra. To investigate the principles of the Avatamsaka Sutra is just to draw near to all Buddhas. This is making offerings to all Buddhas. This is cultivating all Dharma doors, all Buddha's places of conduct. However, this doesn't mean that you cultivate only when the Avatamsaka Sutra is being lectured and when you're listening to the Sutra. Rather, you should recite and uphold it, read it, receive it, study it, and write it out. You should plan to constantly write out the Avatamsaka Sutra, or you can constantly recite the Avatamsaka Sutra, or you can receive and uphold it. To receive and uphold means you don't need to use a book, you have it memorized. You should constantly receive and uphold it. All of these practices are ways of drawing near to the Buddha, because the Avatamsaka Sutra is in fact the Buddha's Dharma body, is the Buddha's wisdom light itself. If you can listen to the Avatamsaka Sutra, recite the Avatamsaka Sutra, and write out the Avatamsaka Sutra, you are drawing near to the Buddha. You shouldn't feel you have to see the Buddha in order to draw near to the Buddha. If you see the Dharma of the Avatamsaka Sutra, that in itself is drawing near to the Buddha. With mind karma constantly pure, one makes offerings to all Tathagatas. When one's mind is constantly pure, one does not have any greed, hatred, or stupidity. No greed, no hatred, no stupidity. Just that is having a mind which is pure. Keep the three karmas of body, mouth, and mind constantly pure while making offerings to all Buddhas, vastly cultivating the giving of offerings. All Sanakatas refer to all Buddhas of the ten directions and the three buildings of time. You make offerings to them, bring forth the great body mind, and vastly cultivate offerings with pure mind karma. One's body karma and mouth karma are um, also pure. Pure body karma means the body is without killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct. Your mind is without greed, hatred, or stupidity. Your mouth is without the four offenses, offenses of irresponsible speech, false speech, abusive speech, and divisive speech. Then the three karmas are purified. Making offerings to the Buddha isn't a matter of making offerings just once or twice, but constantly make offerings and vastly cultivating offerings. One's mind is never weary. No matter how long you make offerings, your mind, your mind never grows weary, and you never decide that you don't want to make offerings. You don't ever conclude that you've made enough offerings, and so you're not going to make them anymore. And once you're able to enter the Buddha's way, if you are able to constantly make offerings and are without the slightest thought of weariness, then even truly, you will be able to enter the path of the Buddha, which means you will have an opportunity to accomplish Buddhahood. Sutra, replete with merit and virtue, inexhaustible, one firmly dwells in the Buddha mind. Thus, one casts out. The net of 
doubts and contemplates the Buddhas without growing tired, thoroughly penetrating all dharmas. One is a, a true disciple of the Buddha. Such a one is able to understand and know all Buddha's powers of sovereignty. This is what vast and great wisdom proclaims. Design is the origin of all dharmas. One should give rise to supreme hopes and expectations and with determination seek the unsurpassed enlightenment. Commentary replete with merit and virtual inexhaustible, one firmly dwells in the body mind. People who cultivate should be replete with inexhaustible merit and virtue. One should establish merit, establish virtue, and establish literature in life after life. To establish merit, establish virtue, and establish literature. From a little comes a lot, and from the small comes a great. From the inexhaustible comes the inexhaustible. That is how you merit and virtue becomes inexhaustible. Once you are replete with inexhaustible merit and virtue, you are able to firmly dwell in the body mind. You are able to solely define your resolve for enlightenment, your determination to enlighten to enlighten to the way. If your merit and virtue isn't complete, then your body mind won't be solid. What's it like your body mind won't be solid? It is like a person who is straddling two balls and has one foot in each. One ball is headed north and one ball is pointed south. That's the position you're in when your body mind is not solid. In your first thought, you want to go to the west, and in your next thought, you want to go east. You're lacking in samadhi power. You're not able to stay on the road that you've chosen. Being that way isn't firmly dwelling in the body mind. With a solid mind for body, you should think, I want to make vows and cultivate the way. No matter what obstructions I encounter, I still want to cultivate the way. No matter what sufferings or difficulties confront me, I still want to cultivate the way. I certainly won't stray from my original intention. No matter what kind of state confronts me, whether it's according or opposing, I will maintain this attitude. According with conditions, yet not changing. Not changing, yet according with conditions. That is to firmly dwell in the body mind. Thus one cast out the net of doubts. Because you firmly dwell in the body mind, Therefore, you break through all nets of doubts. One may wonder, are there really Buddhas? Are there really Bodhisattvas? Are there really Ahas? Is the Buddha Dharma spoken in the sutras true or not? One may constantly have these nets of doubts, so many doubts. You're afraid that if you cultivate the way, you might not be able to take a loss. You don't know if there is any hope that you'll be able to accomplish Buddhahood. All kinds of nets of doubts pluck you. Smash the nets of doubts to bits and establish the Dharma banner everywhere. How do we do this? We can start by building great bodhisattvas everywhere. You shouldn't want to establish small bodhimandas. Don't be someone who dwells in a small hut, a small way place. In Buddhism in America, you shouldn't dwell in themselves in small huts. If you dwell in small huts, you certainly fall. You won't be able to cultivate. When you dwell in a small hut, it's very easy to become casual since nobody is watching over you. It's very free and comfortable there with nobody watching over you. If you want to sleep, you sleep. If you want to eat, you eat. Whatever you want to do, you can do. This is called dwelling in a small hut. It's seemingly all very free. I say this because the day before, yesterday, a layman came here and I said to him, some people make small temples and I destroy them. Most of the people in them don't cultivate. I destroy these small temples and create large ones. People should live together in a large monastery and protect each other and mutually help each other cultivate. People who cultivate the way shouldn't be looking for what's convenient 
or being greedy or ease and luxury or be unwilling to have others watch over them. If nobody's watching over them, then it's certainly easy for them to fall. And so, for the true Buddha Dharma to spread everywhere, you must build large temples and not live in small ones. Smash the net of doubts to bits. To do this, you have to break up all of your small doubts and delusions. And one contemplates the Buddhas without growing tired. One constantly contemplates the Buddha. Contemplating the Buddha means that at all times you don't want to forget the Buddha. You want to always contemplate the Buddha. Although the Buddha is without marks, living beings seek the Buddha by means of marks. Therefore, you want to tirelessly contemplate the Buddha, and then the Buddha in turn will contemplate you without growing tired. If you don't contemplate the Buddha, then the Buddha does not contemplate you. This is like the situation between two people. If one isn't looking at the other, the other one won't look back. But if they are mutually looking at each other, that's called contemplating. So one contemplates the appearance of all Buddhas at all times and never grow tired. Thoroughly penetrating all dharmas, one is a true disciple of a Buddha. Of the Buddha, in this way and constantly, one constantly draws near the Buddhas, make offerings to the Buddhas, and worships the Buddhas. One draws near the Dharma, worships the Dharma, and makes offerings to the Dharma. One draws near the Sangha, worships the Sangha, and makes offerings to the Sangha. One draws near to good and wise advisers, and then one is able to thoroughly penetrate all dharmas. When all dharmas are penetrated. Then one is a true disciple of the Buddha, a true faultless disciple, a genuine Buddhist disciple. Such a one is able to understand and know all Buddha's powers of sovereignty. This is the what vast and great wisdom proclaims. Desire is the origin of all Buddhas. What vast and great wisdom proclaims means what the Buddha proclaims. For the Buddha is one of vast and great wisdom. The dharma he speaks springs from vast, great wisdom. What particular dharma is this? He says, desire is the origin of all dharmas. Desire is greed. Greed for fame is is desire. Greed for food is desire. Greed for sleep is desire. And even you greed for cultivation is desire. Greed for the Buddha dharma is also desire. If you are greedy to draw near a good and wise advisor, you also have desire. However, you want to uplift this desire. So he said, the superior man rises and the inferior man falls. The inferior person is constantly greedy for wealth, greedy for sex, greedy for name, greedy for food, and greedy for sleep. The five desires. Of wealth, sex, name, food, and sleep, people who cultivate the way are greedy to seek the Buddha Dharma, greedy to draw near the Triple Jewel, and greedy to cultivate great wisdom. All of these are desire. All dharmas come about from desire, and so desire is at the source of all dharmas. For example, greed to bring forth the mind for Buddhi and greed to accomplish Buddhahood is also desire. The desires which arise are boundless and inexhaustible, and so the Buddha told us that desire is the origin of all dharmas. Therefore, one should give rise to supreme hopes and expectations. Since desire is the source of all dharmas, you should give rise to the most superior hope and expectations, the loftiest and purest aspirations. You shouldn't give rise to defined desires and expectations. Therefore, the verse admonishes us, and with determination seek the unsurpassed enlightenment. If you, your desire brings forth superior aspirations, then you will resolutely seek the unsurpassed enlightenment. Make up your mind that you're going to cultivate this unsurpassed path for Bodhi, right through to accomplishing Buddhahood.